I thought I'd awaken to a world in mourning. Heavy clouds crowding, a society storming. But there's something different on this golden morning. Something magical in the sunlight, wide and warming. I see a dad with a stroller taking a jog. Across the street, a bright-eyed girl chases her dog. A grandma on the porch fingers her rosary. She grins as the young neighbor brings her groceries. While we might feel small, separate, and all alone, because our people have never been so closely tethered, the question isn't if we will weather this unknown, but how we will weather this unknown together. So on this meaningful morn, we mourn and we mend. Like light, we can't be broken even when we bend. As one we will stand with, healthcare employees will defeat despair and all kinds of disease with families, schools, libraries, artists, hospitals, businesses, and hospitals hit hardest. We ignite not in the light, but in the lack thereof. For it is in our loss that we truly learn to love. In this chaos, we'll discover clarity. In suffering, we must find solidarity. For it's our grief that gives us our gratitude, shows us how to find hope if we should ever lose it. So ensure that this ache is not endured in vain. Do not ignore the pain. Give it purpose, use it. Read children's book, dance alone to DJ music. Know that this distance will make our hearts grow fonder. From a wave of woes, our world will emerge stronger. We'll observe that the burdens braved by humankind are also the moments that make us humans kind. In this morning, we'll smile sweetly, finally seeing that in testing times, we became the best of beings. So we're going to take this little journey with some Maya Angelou poetry, all right? And what I'd like is, when I point to you, I want you to hold up your fist to that problem you've had and say, I'll rise. Now, can you see if you can do that? OK? Ready? I'll rise. All right. That's it. OK. All right. <laughs> You'll get better. You'll find it. <laughs> OK? So now, join me with Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust. I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high. Still, did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes. Shoulders falling down like teardrops weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? <laughs> Do you take it awful hard? Ooh, cause I laugh like I got gold mines digging in my own backyard. <laughs> you may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your very hatefulness, but still like air. <laughs> Does my sexiness upset you? Hmm. Aw. Does it come as a surprise? that I dance like I got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame. 
up from a past that's rooted in pain. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling. I bear in the tide, leaving behind nights of terror and fear. In the daybreak that's wondrously clear, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. Three times. I rise, I rise, I rise. All right. Another Maya Angelou poem, Song for the Old Ones. My fathers sit on benches. Their flesh counts every plank. The slats leave dents of darkness deep in their withered flanks. They nod like broken candles, all waxed and burnt profound. They say, It's understanding that makes the world go round. There in those pleated faces, I see the auction block, the chains and slavery's coffle, the whip and lash and stalk. My fathers speak in voices that shred my very fact and sound. They say, It's our submission that makes the world go round. <laughs> they use the finest of cunning, their naked wits and wiles, the lowly Uncle Tommy and Aunt Jemima smiles. They laughed to shield the crying, then shuffled through their dreams and stepped and fetched. And stepped and fetched. And, and stepped, stepped and, and fetched, fetched a country to write the blues with screams. I understand their meaning. It could and did derive from living on the edge of death. They kept my race alive. Cage Bird by Maya Angelou. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wing on the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade wind soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams. His shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on a distant hill. For the cage bird sings of freedom.
Now this next one I'm going to do for you is a favorite among the ladies. It's entitled, Phenomenal Woman. Let's put a little jazz with it. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model's size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies, I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, woo, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman. <laughs> Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, ladies. That's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellow stand or fall down to their knees. <laughs> and then they swarm around me. Ooh, a hive of honey bleeds. I say, it's a fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, ooh, the joy in my feet. I'm a woman. <laughs> Phenomenally. You hear me up there? Phenomenal woman. That's me. Now. Men themselves have wondered just what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. And when I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say it's the arch in my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, <laughs> phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed, why I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. Now when you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's the click of my feet the bend of my hair, the palms of my hand, the need for my care, cause I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's you, and you, and you, and you, and that's me.
In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, Black men, as well as white men, will be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note in so far as her citizens of color are concerned. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. And so we've come to cash a check. It is a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We cannot walk alone, and as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall, not, that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends. I have, I a, have dream a dream today. today. And so, even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I, I have, have a, a dream, dream today. today. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal. I, I have, have a dream, dream today. today. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have, I have a, dream a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. New Hampshire. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. New York cook, Kolehan Sanaropoto. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Desde las crecientes Alleghenies de Pennsylvania. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Tukak Colorado. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. California Coxo Chogin, Kyongsil, Minnesota. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring from every, every mountain side. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. And when this happens, and when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet and every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last. Free, free at last. last. Thank, Thank God, God Almighty. We are, we are free, free at, at last. last.
to share a little piece that I wrote uh, called An Out of the World Moment with Steph Curry. The other day I was distracted from the troubles of the world via the NBA in a glorious way. Watching Steph Curry trying to break free underneath the basket, looking for a quick score instead of getting to where he needed to be to fire off one of his deadly threes, like a quick draw gunfighter in the Wild West territories. But he got smacked like a sudden heart attack. And before he landed on his back, he kind of looped the ball towards the hoop in the midst of all that, like there was nothing to that. And the shot went in, and he got up and shot a free shot wearing a grin that said he expected that shot to go in. <laughs> a grin and appreciation of his own breathtaking athleticism. And it put a smile on that face of mine, too. 
just from the enjoyment of a moment or two away from a world that's singing the blues. Another piece I wrote, When I See Stacy. When I see Stacy, I feel pride for my people's history, for how we journeyed across the sea, packed like spoons between the holes and decks of slave ships, shackled, starving, suffocating in our very misery, snatched from Mother Africa, our homeland, like the cotton we would pick in the Americas on the first leg of a rocky path to an as yet still undisclosed destiny. When I see Stacy, I see a woman of keen vision who has reestablished the connection we need with our beginnings, bringing it to shine on us like the once familiar rays of our homelands, life-giving sons, a woman tending to our needs like a lioness protecting her little ones, teaching us how to be both wary and cunning, how to hold our own and take our own licks and hang on to concede nothing if what we're facing is riddled with wrongs. And when I see her, I hear the rhythms of djembe and udu drums, the melatones of the imbira being thumbed, the strumming of occultings and choruses as verses and choruses are being sung in tongues we once knew. And I want to dance in the joy of just seeing Stacy give credence to our dreams of truth and reconciliation and retribution for the centuries of our subjugation to a form of dehumanization that has deprived our nation of evolving into a model civilization the world needs it to become. When I see Stacy, I see a modern day human rights icon who represents the hope that such a day of contrition will eventually come, that we shall some they truly overcome. When we were rehearsing, and the, the Ern, Ernie has so, so many poems, so I wrote this little one to add tonight. I'd like to share it with you. And it's entitled, Standing on Midnight Shoulders by Yolanda Marie Franklin. How do I take that climb to the mountaintop when the beat of my heart gets quieted day by day, the way the drive you've taken seems nonstop? I can almost taste it when I see the sun run its beams down the smooth midnight shoulders of those who made it. I won't evade it any longer. I know now it's worth it to unzip that layer that hides me and crawl out into spaces unlimited. And where this end will be, who knows? But I just might anoint thee. My name is tenacious, talented Yolanda. I am from hot Faraday, Louisiana, sunny Philippine Islands. I am from fresh cut green grass, Onions and bell peppers sizzling in a frying pan, collard greens and a little hot water cornbread. I am from chirping birds in the banana palm trees, busy San Diego streets. I am from delicious lumpia rolled in a pastry. I am from you are smart, you are beautiful, and you make the room light up when you enter it, Yolanda. I am from instructors pushing me and teaching me the importance of getting along with all people. And the only limit you'll truly have on yourself is you. And something you should know about me is that I matter too. My thoughts, my words, and my care for you. And now it's time for me to share it with the world while standing on midnight shoulders. For this next piece, I'm going to hold my script up close because I want to get into it. 
Uh, it's called Rapper Mellow's Epiphany of Love and Hope. One day, Rapper Mello, known for his smooth flow, was kicking it in his studio, freestyling, spitting lyrics about nigga this and nigga that and bitches and hoes and who had more riches and fame, more game on hip hop's MC totem pole, his usual groove, don't you know? What he uses to get the world off its seat and on its feet, nodding and dipping and moving to funky hypnotic rap beats that truly were amazing. But as Mello played with soul-stirring cadences and tongue-twisting phrasing that day, he didn't know that an awakening was heading his way. Something Twilight Zone-like in a way. Sounds of protests rising from the street below his window. Chants of, I can't breathe, defund the police. And rapidly, there surfaced a lingering memory of a brother taking his last breath under the weight of the man's knee, a so-called keeper of the peace. And he saw in his mind's eye the rise of white supremacy malicious, terrifying yahoos, creating crimes against humanity, trying to get society to take giant steps backwards to how things used to be, panicking, frightened to death of becoming the minority. And suddenly, Mello felt the burdens of the troubles of the world, and his emotions began to swirl and rush and stir like crashing waves at high tide like G-forces on a roller coaster ride. And by the time the day's sunlight gave way to the darkness in the night, things had quieted, and an idea came to Mello, softly like a feather riding a gentle ocean breeze, teasing him, coaxing him to maybe try something new musically. And he thought of how he could put a spin on the state planet Earth is in, and sat down and commenced to pen songs with themes of love for children, the innocent, the recipients of what the past has sent, solid evidence that not much time has been spent on making right our discontents. And he imagined the young ones as he hummed and sang his lines, listening with open eyes and questioning minds letting his lyrics sink in their consciences like water soaking in sand that's already dampened. Lyrics intended to get them to view their curiosities and intuitions as rich natural resources to be mined for answers to all the dreams of peace and harmony that have been deferred or denied to humankind throughout time. Lyrics created to set a spark in them that might help them lift humanity out of the dark into the bright, promising light of a promising new age, a departure from our hateful ways, our legacies of us versus them, in a caste system that divides us by the colors of our skin and our ethnicities and nationalities and sexualities and along our beliefs and creeds. If not them, who indeed? Seems Mello had what's called an epiphany, a wonderful illuminating reality compelling him to plant the seed that our children need to bring to the world the hope and love it needs. And it came to his mind at just the right time, in the nick of time.
Now this next one by Langston Hughes is entitled Harlem. You may know it from A Raisin in the Sun. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or festered like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? Feeling Langston. Feeling Langston, Mr. Hughes. Feeling how he could piece together a rhyme that gives you the blues, or string a line of words sweet as the floral taste of late summer honeydew, making black folks' hearts sing like a bird once caged, taking wing free. And we honor him today as we undeferred dreams, awakening gradually like caterpillars, metamorphosing into butterflies, pollinating beautiful flowers, bettering their lives. As we rise as high as those dreams, feeling Langston. Precious days, light your way, rest your wings, yeah, and stay a while. To love every moment of the day The flowers you kiss all come to life Soaring winds, hey, baby Oh, rainbow waves Touch my mind
by Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams. For when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. Here's another really short one by Langston Hughes. And um, he didn't know his father. And I used to think that this poem bo bouquet by Langston Hughes was to his father, but I think it's really to us about holding on to what we have with our family, with our, our fathers, and those memories that we, listen up. Gather quickly out of darkness all the songs you know and throw them at the sun before they melt like snow. I'm gonna say it again. Gather quickly out of darkness all the songs you know and throw them at the sun before they melt like snow. Right? Yeah. Like to bring up some more Preuss students. This is Let America Be America Again by Langston Hughes. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme that any man be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. 
Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath. But opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Say, who are you that mumbles in the dark? And who are you that draws your veil across the stars? I am the poor white, fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery scars. I am the red man driven from the land. I am the immigrant clutching the hope I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog, of mighty crush the weak. I am the young man full of strength and hope tangled in that ancient endless chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of grab the ways of satisfying need, of work the men, of take the pay, of owning everything for one's own greed. I am the farmer, bondsman to the soil. I am the worker, sold to the machine. I am the Negro, servant to you all. I am the people, humble, hungry, mean. Hungry yet today, despite the dream. Beaten yet today, oh, pioneers. I am the man who never got ahead, the poorest worker bartered through the years. Yet I'm the one who dreamt our basic dream, in the old world while still a serf of kings, who, who dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true, that even yet its mighty daring sings. In every brick and stone, in every furrow turned, that's made the America that I've loved today. Oh, I'm the man who sailed those early seas in search of what I meant to be my home. I am the one who left dark Ireland's shore and Poland's plain and England's grassy lee and torn from black Africa's strand I came to build a homeland of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me. Surely not me. The millions shot down when we strike. The millions who have nothing for our pay. For all the dreams we've dreamed and all the songs we've sung and all the hopes we've held and all the flags we've hung, the millions who have nothing for our pay, except the dream that's almost dead today. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet, and yet must be, the land where every man is free, the land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me. Who made America whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. Sure, call me any ugly name you choose. The steel of freedom does not stain from those who live like leeches on the people's lives. We must take our land back again. America, oh yes. I say it plain, America never was America to me. And yet I swear this oath, America, America will, will be. be. Out of the rack and ruin of our gangster death, the rape and the wrath of graft and stealth and lies. We, the people, must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers. The mountains and the endless plain. All, all the stretch of these great green states. And, and make, make America, America again. again.
Thank you. And, and next, we'd like to do uh, a Donny Hathaway classic. And um, actually, my son and I, we were playing this, and we made a video. Cecil saw the video and said, we have to perform this song this evening. So <laughs> uh, please say hello to Noah East on Hammond, Oregon.
so much. Thank you.